Hello, I'm Alex the Uncodable, and welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That. Why am I talking about this time? Well, it seems as good a time as any to talk about this. Spoilers ahead for Steven Universe. Created by Rebecca Sugar, who had previous fame and work on Adventure Time, Steven Universe is a modern-day Cartoon Network cartoon. Coming in the full runners of such giants such as Ed, Ed, and Eddie, codenamed Kids Next Door, and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, this one has worked its way into the hearts and minds of those who watch Cartoon Network, and has joined the Cartoon, Pantheon, the Cartoon Network Pantheon in terms of the characters that we love. Now. Why am I talking about this show? Because recently it came to sort of the end of an arc. In the most recent episodes of the show, we had Diamond Days, and most of the issues of the show were solved. The most recent episode, Change Your Mind, was a 45 minute climax. And I thought that since this was the end of an arc, I should probably talk about it now before they release the next season. So, Steven Universe. What can I say about it? Steven Universe for me sits in a vein of show of shows that needed to be shown to kids in puberty. Now, this isn't to say that this isn't a kid show so much, but I wouldn't show it to little kids, mostly for a very specific reason. It doesn't exist in the same vein as shows such as Phineas and Ferb, a show which I, as Phineas and Ferb and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, shows that I would definitely show to little kids because they're good shows for little kids. They invite imagination, adventure, experience, expansion. They talk about ideas and words and things that we can't understand. And they're fun for parents to watch as well, which is always a bonus. I always think that when you're making a kid's show, you should always try to cater to the parents who watch as well. Like, don't throw in, like, weird adult jokes, but the humor should also tickle the fancy of an adult. For instance, my father, quite likes Phineas and Ferb, so much so that he showed it to my two younger brothers. Why? Because although Phineas and Ferb are always going off on these adventures that appeal to kids, the stories of Dr. Doofenshmirtz and Perry the Platypus, which also appeals to children, which also appeals to children, is loved by him, and he really loves those characters. So where would I show, um, Steven Universe? Steven Universe is a show that I would put in the same category as Gravity Falls or Adventure Time. Something that I would show to, say, a 12 or 13 year old, or a 12 to 13 to 14 year old. Someone who's growing up and coming into understanding of who they are. Why is this? Because when you're watching these shows, they have a fairly similar setup. The first few episodes seem fairly disconnected. Sure, they exist on a timeline, but really they're an adventure of the week kind of episode. There's a monster to deal with, an adventure to be had, and they gotta go do it. There's an overarching story, and there's a canonical timeline, but early to begin with, it just seems like another kid's show. Something to ease the viewer in. But then the truth bombs start dropping. For Adventure Time, it was talking about mortality. It was talking about being a hero. It was talking about family and friendship. And the importance of power. These were all very important topics that Adventure Time hit over its entire seasonal run, up until the climax which we recently saw. Understanding, people, these were all very important. Same happened with Gravity Falls. To begin with, Gravity Falls just seemed like an ordinary summer adventure, let's go out there and fight monsters. But over time it became a story about family and buried secrets. And not to mention, it became a story about sibling love and understanding. Something that many brothers and sisters around the world 
could cater to understand more. Not to mention the villains in these shows have been just as great as the, as the heroes. In lots of kids shows, particularly ones for little kids, the hero is always the top dog in the story. But in shows like Adventure Time and Gravity Falls, the two main characters are just as likeable as the villains. Dipper and Mabel are fairly likeable characters. They play off each other well. And they parallel greatly to the demon Bill Cipher and how he acts and works. His sort of arrogance, sort of... His arrogant Rumpelstiltskin sort of demeanor. The same works in Adventure Time. Finn's pure morals that need to be questioned in that need to be questioned in Forge, and Jake's kind of go with the flow of personality per go really well with the Ice King and his constant kidnapping of princesses. Then Magic Man and his constantly trying to just be a jerk to everyone, and so on and so forth with the various villains that they faced over their series. Now, why now? What about Steven Universe? Steven Universe plays out very much like these. At the beginning, it just appears to be the story of a single goofy boy living with three magical women, each named after a gemstone and have a gemstone in some part of their body. And they're able to pull forth weapons and are training Steven up, because it appears that Steven's mother was one of these magical women, and he himself is starting to come into his powers. At the beginning of the show, it was just a playful little kid show. Every week there was a new monster to fight, a new challenge to overcome, or some new power to unlock. I don't have healing tears, I have healing spit! There was a new friend to be made, and we watched Steven sort of bumble around. But then the truth started to come out. There were in fact other gems out there besides his, besides the ones that he grew up with. Not only with the monsters that they were fighting gems, but it turns out there was an overarching story. There was a place called Homeworld. The Homeworld for the gems. Yeah. Why is it that only three normal gems existed on Earth, and all the others were monsters, yet there seemed to be an entire empire out there that we didn't know of? Because of the backstory. We learned through Steven Universe that the Crystal Gems have been part of a long ago war. A war for the Earth. And that the Diamonds, who controlled the Crystal Empire, were taking over planets, using them to create more and more soldiers. D driving life out of the planet and into gems in order to form more of their race. In fact, part of this had been done to the Earth in the form of the Kindergarten. And we also learned secrets about Steven. We learned, we learned secrets about Steven, and we learned secrets about the gems. We took characters that weren't that complex, and we made them more complex. We learned about Garnet's own intimate relationship that makes her up. We learned about Amethyst's um, thoughts about herself. The fact that She's a mistake, that she was left behind, that she's too short in order to, that she is physically different than what she's supposed to be. We learn about Pearl's obsession, about her unable to let go of the past. And we learned about Stephen and his mother, and whether or not he's going to follow in her footsteps or do something else. We learn about Connie, Stephen's best friend, who grew up from being a timid bookworm into a sword fighting amazing person. Into a sword, into this amazing sword fighter. We met Lapis Lazuli, a traumatized gem that had been stuck in a mirror for centuries. Come into her own and understand that running away isn't the answer. And that friendship at home is with the people that you love. We met Peridot, someone who was obsessed with ruling for Homeworld and learning about ruling for Homeworld and for the Empire and being superior to everyone else because of her stature within the system. And we saw her come into understanding of what Earth was, about what beauty was, and what enjoyment and life was. It's a really intimate series. Why do I say this series is good to show to someone who's growing up? Because it hits important topics and lessons that people growing up need to understand. People who ask the question, who am I? What is my purpose? What do I do with my life? People who ask the question of, what is it that, people who ask the question of, will I be like my family? Will I follow in the footsteps of my father or mother? Or will I try something new with my life? It, it's a very important series to talk about these kinds of things, about acceptance, forgiveness for long time struggles. Very important one that I learned was 
Just because a long ago argument or feud is no longer talked about between two people doesn't mean that's still there. Both people need to fess up and talk it out. Talk to an understanding and forgive each other. Because you're not going to make anyone happy if you're just constantly being silent and kind of sassy to each other. It's a good series to show to teenagers, particularly troubled ones, who need some understanding. Why? Because, I'm sorry to say, but sometimes kids just need to hear it out of the TV. There's something comforting about hearing a character on a TV show talk about the struggles in their life and how they parallel to yours, and how they overcome it, giving you an indication of how you can overcome it. And not only that, the world's amazing! The world and art style is spectacular in the show. The colors bounce. The light. The colors bounce. The, s the style is amazing. The adventures are spectacular to watch. And the characters are just likable. Watching Steven go on these struggles and not using his body and not, use and not using his strength to overcome obstacles, but talking to people, understanding their emotions, giving them suggestions, showing wisdom in order to overcome quarrels between both friend and foe alike is important. And it's important to understand. And it's something that I think lots of people struggle to understand. Why why do we love this why do I love this series so much? Because of the story. Because of the story it tells. In the, part, in the last few episodes, in the recent arc finale, I guess I'll call it, we met with White Diamond, the ruler of the Empire, and the one who believes that everything has a purpose. That everything has a purpose in the design, and that it must fulfill that purpose, because she deems it so. This counts for her own sisters, Yellow and Blue, who constantly go out there conquering empires, making more gems, just to make White happy. But she's distant. She thinks that she is perfect and no one else can live up to that expectation. And it's cruel. The way that she treats gems is rather cruel. Basically the idea in gem world is that you are born for a purpose. You fight, you build, you terraform, you make technology. You are there to see the future, you're there to socialize. That's it. Different kinds of gems have their purpose and they have no reason to interact with one another. Now, it's believed, and on Gem World, it's basically believed that lots of people have that purpose. And that's what you do. That's the only thing you do. And that's something very important that people need to hear. I've met an astounding amount of people who just do what they believe is what they must do. That they must do this thing and only this thing. Why? Because either fate deems it, or it's because what their parents did. And what their parents before their parents did. And they're afraid to chase after their dreams. They're afraid to pursue something greater. Now I understand that for a lot of people. I'm a filmmaker. And quite often I have to come to grips with the fact that I need to get a normal job. Why? Because I need some kind of income. And that kind of income needs to be had. Because without that, I can't do anything to pursue my dream. But when you see someone who's financially stable, emotionally stable, has a good position in life, but refuses to take the plunge, even though their dream is there, I, I just kind of question. Uh, that's, that's what this show is for. It's to show you that you don't need to stay with that purpose. If you're a lawyer, but you love to draw, you have time off. You, you know, take some time off go and do some art. You can still be a civil servant, but you can still draw. If you're an accountant, but you love to dance, take up evening dance classes. That's what this show's about. Not only is it about... It's about learning to be what you want to be. At least that's what I got out of it. But also, it's about talking things out. So often in media, the so often in popular media, in particular of one particular famous family, it appears that you need to keep your emotions bottled up. You need to not talk to your friends or family until it all comes crashing out in one spectacular screaming spree for the cameras to catch. 
Otherwise, you just spread gossip. You do little asides to the camera. That kind of thing. But no, that's not what life's about. If you have friends and family and you have loved ones and you have feelings that you need to talk about, then you talk about it to them. Because if you don't say anything, then things aren't going to get any better. It's once again about taking the plunge. And that's why I would describe Steven Universe as, and why it's such an important series to show people who are growing up in a particularly sensitive stage of their life. They need to watch a show that teaches them about taking the plunge. It's about taking the plunge, whether that's about following a dream, or having a calling out there somewhere to an environment you've never been to before, or talking to friends or family about something that's bothering you. Then you need to do it. Now, Steven Universe isn't over. It's been confirmed there's another season coming out, and I'm looking forward to it. Possibility of a time skip? Maybe. It's a good series overall, and one you should keep an eye out for. What do I rate this? I rate this 9 out of 10. I'm probably going to get flack for that, because why? Because 9 out of 10. No. Um, my reason for that being, I love Steven Universe. I think it's a really good show. I watch it whenever I can. But... I'm just gonna be honest, some of the early episodes just weren't my thing. It might be because I was too old when I first came into it, but they just felt like I was, there yeah, was a bit of dawdling there at the beginning. There was lots of filler episodes, and I get it, I get why. I explained why, but for me that wasn't a thing, so you know. Nine out of ten gems. That's what I rate this show. So yeah, if you're a teenager looking for a new show to watch, or an adult who's struggling, I recommend giving Steven Universe a look. Thank you for listening today. Thank you for listening to Don't Quote Me On That. I have been the Unquotable Alex. Leave a like, like, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below for your favorite Steven Universe episode, or your favorite Steven Universe moment, or what you thought of the end of Steven Universe. Please. Oh, and leave us a, com and leave us a comment about stuff that you want us to look at. Film or TV. Sure, let's have a look at it. I've been Alex the Unquotable. Thank you for watching.